Holy shit. They're out. And they look pissed off. And they're staring at me. I'll have to call Peter, get him out here to rein these things in. They look out of their minds with hunger and, and big teeth on them. Yeah, this is terrifying. I wonder if they eat birds. Probably not so lucky. Now they're making some kind of blood curdling noise. Well, hopefully, they stay over there. Good morning! This is Bill from Curious Cars on an increasingly nice Florida Thursday. Uh, we've had a bit of a hot front, which has absolutely sucked. Uh, three days of like weather in the high 80s, a little bit of humidity, gotta run the AC in the car, AC kicks on in the house, a reminder of the horrible, miserable, shitty, awful weather that's to come. Uh, oh my god, they're back. Oh, shit, I thought we'd dodge them. They were, uh, they were out this morning, I was gonna mention it, and now they're back, and they're gonna, they're coming at me. Rouse? 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 All right, so they don't know German. Uh, he's just staring at me. He's giving me the stink eye, this one. Yeah, I think that one's name is Cujo. Uh, well, look, I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to hope these things get the hell away. There's some birds around. You could eat them. Try it out. You never know till you try. <sighs> anyway, um, yeah, I'm just so unsettled now. Shitty hot weather. Okay, so that's where we were going. Oh my god, this is re How the hell am I supposed to do a video with three creepy goats scaring at me? Oh my god. Okay, well anyway, I'm gonna try. Um, but today, a cool front is blowing back through, the weather is down, there's a little bit of a nip in the air, and I am chipper as a result. Uh, what new- there's a giant bird coming down in the back. I don't know what the hell that thing was. It looked like a pterodactyl. And now there's two of them. They've, oh, you know what? This is too much. Why doesn't Peter call these things? What is he even doing with these things? And now they're more. They're okay. I'm just gonna keep going. Um, God, I, I can't. I can't. Put, Rouse, Rouse, Rouse. Go on. Go on. Go on. Oh, thank God they're skittish. Look, that one has horns. Satanic looking thing. All right, look at him. Oh my god. All right, they're off. Oh boy, oh man, there's my shine all before I forget that. I'm telling you, this has already been one of those mornings. It really, listen to him. And they're coming back again. This is just unacceptable. I'm gonna have to find somewhere to go that's not creepy as hell. Let's get that in there. Let's. All right, again, sorry about all this, but we're, <laughs> we're going to keep going. I did not expect to have a uh, animal encounter this morning. Uh, so I'll skip my preamble, whatever it is. Okay, so the weather's better. It's coming in. We're going to have a nice, cool weekend. Thank God. Today, I have this 1996 Oldsmobile Aurora. I keep saying Alero, but that was a little cheesy thing that they came out with a few years later to capitalize on the success of the Aurora. And as somebody in the uh, uh, comment section on that Bentley video the other day, and I'm sorry I don't remember your name, I don't remember anyone's name ever, not even my lady friend, or it doesn't matter. I said this was the queen of the trailer park, which I, you know, I have to give him credit. It's one of the funniest comments I've heard about the Aurora. It nails it on the head in a certain way, but it's not entirely fair to, uh, to Oldsmobile or this first generation Aurora. I'd certainly give it to him with the second gen, uh, but not this first gen. Uh, Oldsmobile, oh, they're over there. God damn it. Oldsmobile hit its peak in 1985. They sold over a million cars. Just eight years later, uh, they were in the 400,000 range. And I guess GM execs for once saw this coming. They weren't blindsided by something. So they decided that they were going to come up with a car to rejuvenate Oldsmobile. And uh, they started penning away at it. And uh, that led to something called the uh, tube car concept. 
uh, which I think was uh, displayed at the Detroit Auto Show in the 88 or 89. Uh, I'll stick a picture of that up so you can see it. And uh, the tube car, you know, was very interesting, but this thing looks just like it. It was the Aurora on the way, uh, with, you know, the difference that had no pillars at all in the middle, and it was uh, suicide doors, which would have been awesome if they'd done on this car. Uh, but otherwise, very, very similar. Swoopy front, swoopy back, uh, roof line, uh, you know, kind of thin and lovely. And uh, it, uh, you know, it caused a bit of a stir. So Oldsmobile rushed this car forward, and it was a smash hit, at least for them in this time in the beginning. And you know what? You, you, GM gets a lot of flack. They get a lot of uh, torture. I'm going to tell you this. If you look at this car and the design of this car that came out in 1995, four actually it was released, but 95 model year, and look at the CLS Mercedes, which knocked the world on its ass just 10 years later. 10 years later. If you lowered the roof line on this car, the greenhouse, you know, the front and rear windshield, the four windows, made that about six inches lower. Uh, what you've got is sort of a pseudo CLS on your hands. And Oldsmobile was doing it 10 years before Mercedes came out with it. So you really have to give the design team a little bit of credit for being it. Oh my God. Oh, this is too much. <sighs> go on, go on. There's goat food on the other side of that RV. I swear to God, there's delicious goat food over there. Go get it. Go get it. It's fantastic. Anyway, you really have to give Oldsmobile credit for coming out with what was a very advanced design in the time. One thing that I don't give them credit for, and by the way, I don't want to go into the whole history of Oldsmobile. I did that on, uh, I don't know if it was a Delta. What, what did we do? Uh, Olds 88 Coupe, Brome. Uh, maybe it was that... Uh, that big 98 broom, but uh, either way, you know, Ransom Olds and the acquisition by GM and all that kind of stuff. Um, if you want to hear the history of Olds, uh, one of the last couple of Oldsmobile videos gets into that. I'll put a link to it in the uh, description. So I'm just going to go on. We're going to take that as standard and move on with this. Uh, but you have to give GM credit for this car. They were, Olds was getting beat to shit by the European and Japanese makers. You know, Infinity was out, Lexus was out, uh, Mercedes-Benz had started building some entry-level cars that competed with Oldsmobile. And that dug into their numbers and absolutely brutalized them. And uh, this car was designed to take that on. It was meant to be European. And here's where I can fault them a little bit. Nowhere on this car, other than one spot which I'll show you, does it say, Oldsmobile. Not even the badge is that famous rocket, you know, logo that they had for years. It's some sort of swoopy A, you know, meant to signify Aurora, which I think is a shame. I mean, if you're going to be ashamed of your brand, and I mean, I get it. Oldsmobile was considered to be a bit of a stodgy company at the time. Uh, but if you're going to be ashamed of your brand, then what the hell is the point? Why even keep going? And I guess at some point that occurred to GM because they didn't keep going. Uh, 2003, I believe, was the last year for Oldsmobile. In fact, the second generation uh, Aurora, this uh, may not be, you know, widely thought of, but was not meant to be the Aurora. They were going to have the successor to this car be just as fancy and high tech as this one was. When they decided Oldsmobile was going to die, uh, they took uh, the Antares, which was going to be the replacement for the Delta 88, the lower rung in the model. This is the flagship. Uh, they took that car and turned it into an Aurora. So uh, the second generation Aurora was more or less a more cheaply designed car meant to be a lower entry uh, point than this one was. This, When it came out, this was going to replace the 98. Uh, the 98 uh, was still going. It went through 96. Big full frame cool thing that I really like. Uh, I don't know about the styling, but I like the full frame uh, dinosaur stuff. But uh, this was meant to replace it. It was like 10 grand more. It was very expensive. And uh, unfortunately, when they phased out the 98 and 96, the 98 buyer did not move over to the Aurora. And uh, that's why the sales started dwindling. Uh, Oldsmobile had decided they wanted the target market for this car to be 40 plus, uh, as well as the guys who used to buy the 98. And uh, none of it really worked out that way. It was those butch looking women in aqua shorts at the trailer parks. Oh, I'm. That was more the second gen. Uh, but if you look at the front end of this thing, the way it's styled, you've got these almond-shaped, uh, very attractive. And remember that we're going to look, judge this by 96 standards, not today's standards. This thing looked like a spaceship in 1996. I mean, it was way out there in terms of style. Look at the cat. Look at this insane cat. 
I'm telling you, this is too terrifying around here. At least there's no birds over my head. But this was very avant-garde, very forward-thinking styling uh, in 1995-96. There just, just wasn't that much stuff out there. The way the fog lights swoop up from the bottom, uh, the way the uh, front swoops down around those almond lights, uh, the integrated bumpers, the bulges in the fenders, the swooping roof line, the uh, mirrors that are, yeah, they're a bit overdone, but they're very aero, special-looking uh, six-star alloy rims without any badging on them at all. Uh, this wraparound tail lamp, which is very cool, uh, aided with visibility and looked neat with the Aurora only badge, no Oldsmobile stuff, big twice pipes at the bottom, uh, a crazy looking rear uh, swoop around glass window there, a glass window, that's a brilliant statement, <laughs> as opposed to one made of cardboard or steel. <sighs> anyway, um, a very, very neatly styled car, and uh, unlike anything GM made at the time. And frankly, it took it right to the European makers. Uh, people uh, really considered this car to be on par with uh, some of the stuff coming out of Europe at the time, both in terms of its build quality, its technology, uh, its powertrain, and uh, to some extent, its handling. Uh, it does have pillarless glass, which I think is awesome. Not pillarless, frameless. Uh, again, back to the CLS, same type of thing. Uh, GM just didn't have frameless glass back then. I mean, unless we're talking about, you know, some shitbox Firebird type thing that just inherited it. This was designed to be this way in 90, you know, late 80s, early 90s, which was not the way GM was going. It's much easier to have a frame around the window. You don't have to worry about it being loose or, uh, you know, rattling or this or that. It takes much more engineering to make a frameless window uh, than it does one without. So, again, kudos to these guys. All right, let's have a look under the hood. So, you know, the car just doesn't get the respect it deserves. It really, really doesn't. Uh, if GM had played their cards right, this car that was meant to save Oldsmobile might have actually done it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it wasn't meant to be. Uh, if they had Buick's cachet in China, Oldsmobile, then they'd probably still be around today. Okay, this is a 4-liter, 32-valve, uh, double overhead cam, North Star derived V8. Uh, they took some of the displacement out of the North Star and about 50 horse. So this has about 250 horsepower. And, you know, has the same North Star stuff at the time, that limp home feature that they had and, uh, you know, the computer control, that kind of thing. And uh, it's actually a pretty terrific engine. Uh, GM used a very modified version to race, you know, Aurora IMSA cars back in the 90s to some success. So uh, a pretty nice architecture, pretty nice platform. And uh, the North Star, of course, has, you know, kept going, gone on, and, uh, you know, with some controversy, is considered to be a pretty damn good engine. Uh, it goes through a modern incarnation, in 95 anyway, of a, a turbo hydra transmission with computer control. And, uh, you know, GM, but, eh, historically, they've built the best automatics in the world. That's why Rolls-Royce used them. And I know ZF does it all now, but uh, in this era and before, if any maker in the world wanted a good automatic, they just bought a GM product, and uh, this is uh, no exception. It, it works very, very well uh, with this V8 to provide some nice low-end torque and, uh, you know, move the car down the road. And here was the thing. The car was not cheap then. This this car stickered over 36000 uh, bucks, which, uh, you know, is, is I think it was on like $60,000 in today dollars. But uh, compared to the other cars in its class, the BMWs, the C-Class, you know, even the E at the lower end, all of them had V6s. The olds alone had the V8, and uh, that was a pretty nice advantage for them. I like the way the headlight levelers have these little built-in, uh, you know, bubble levels on them. I think that's kind of cool. Uh, this car is amazing, by the way. 20,000 miles. It came in through a tip on the website. Thank you. I know I haven't done anything with the website, but who would expect me to have any kind of stick with itness on that front? But uh, uh, very nice to see. There goes Peter. Hopefully he's got his goats in check. Must be devastating for him today to have to drive a C-Class. He's probably ducking his head down at the red lights. 
and I guess it needed photographing. All right, sorry for all my bag of crap in the back. Actually, even my coronavirus whiskey flask is out. There's the tag and my, yeah, whatever. Uh, but anyway, you see it's still got the infant retainment net here. Uh, a little bit loose, so your infants might get through it if they're persistent. Uh, hopefully they're not, and they're just going to stick behind there. Uh, but a nice-sized, good-sized trunk in there that you're going to be able to get a lot of crap into. Uh, it's got kind of a small opening because of the design of the car, but yeah, you can't have it all. And uh, underneath that guy there, and you have to take my word for it because I don't feel like pulling it all out as a spare tire. And uh, there it is. So that's a very decent sized trunk on the Oldsmobile Aurora and uh, befitting cars in its class and higher. Again, they're using this thing to kind of compete with the C. That's what I read. I, I look at it and I think it's got to be an E-Class competitor, but eh, I guess they had targeted the C as well. And the Lexus uh, GS as a sports sedan. Oh, we already went under the hood. What the hell am I doing? Up top, nice big sunroof. That's one of the few options you could get here. Uh, in the rear, more frameless glass. And uh, we'll get into the interior. I'm going to take two seconds to say... Oh my God, do I love this interior color in this car. I don't even know if I would have bought this if it were tan inside. Uh, but teal leather, I have not seen in many, many years. And to me, it's a throwback to the, you know, crazy colored cars of the 50s and 60s. And, uh, you know, I imagine this color did make some of the old cats who bought 98s happy. Uh, you know, they thought they were driving an old Starfire or something, or even a Roadmaster convertible from the 50s when uh, G was building these amazing cars that did have pretty crazy color combinations. Uh, anyway, frameless glass, nice, big. All this stuff is very European and wasn't really being used in too many American cars at the time. And the build quality is good. This is nice and tight. This is proper. Uh, in fact, the whole frame of this car, the... Uh, uh, the Unibody actually broke the testing machine at GM. They have a crush thing where they put it, you know, basically like a trash compactor. They stick the frame of the car in and they start crushing it and they see at what pressure it, it collapses. Well, <clears throat> this car didn't collapse. It broke the machine and they ended up having to test it on the full-size truck tester uh, and it ended up rating twice as high as necessary for federal standards and that was part of Oldsmobile and GMZ uh, to truly make this a very rigid, squeak and rattle free car that would compete with the European stuff. I want to say the frame also resonated at 25 hertz, uh, which uh, equaled the Mercedes E Class at the time, which is quite an accomplishment. Uh, this is also real burl, believe it or not. This is not cheesy GM wood crap. This is real wood in here. And uh, that was, again, part of Oldsmobile's design and uh, plan to take on the Euros. But uh, anyway, you're Canadians are going to be chipper enough back there. They're going to have to duck their head getting in because of that low D pillar, uh, but they will. And uh, three of them, eh, if you have a little tiny Canadian in the middle, it'd be better, two on either side. Uh, but uh, you can fit three back there, and they're going to be fine. Also has a uh, very fancy looking uh, center console. Nice place to stick a nine millimeter in there. No issues at all. And a uh, little place to put a, I don't know, I can't really put a bag of drugs there. It'll fall out when you put it up. But you do have some cup holders. I think this thing closes the vent, uh, which seems way over the top in terms of why would you bother having a switch that big. Uh, you also get some map pockets back there and uh, nice stuff. <clears throat> With a little arrow looking oval door handles are kind of cool. Up front, more, oh, look at this. I've got this on for when I photograph. More of that beautiful teal leather. I mean, it just sold me on the car. Look at that insane color combination on this thing. Uh, I'm sorry, I just think that's cool as hell. And actually, before we get in and drive, let me hang my tag on the back. Aurora. It sounds more like a experimental test plane you'd have gotten from Lockheed Martin at the time. More so than it does an Oldsmobile. Okay, uh, door panels, you've got, again, first of all, when you turn this thing on at night, the whole thing lights up like the Starship Enterprise, including these uh, controls here on the door, and it just looks amazing. Uh, you can see that the vent flows through Mercedes style uh, into the door panel, and then you've got your side vents here in the door on this nice wood panel. You've got a very much Mercedes or Lincoln style 
uh, seat adjuster with uh, lumbar upper and lower uh, heat and uh, memory and of course your door locks and uh, kind of a useless little pocket down here might be a good place for some pens or a switchblade uh, but the fit and finish the quality of the car is quite incredible and quite nice and uh, frankly exceeded my expectations of uh, GM now again this thing is a one owner 20,000 mile car uh, I haven't seen an Aurora otherwise in a very long time so I guess I got we need to go look at 140,000 miler to see how it held up uh, but as far as the tightness and and controls of this car, I have to say, I'm pretty, yeah, I'm pretty impressed. Uh, very supportive, nice leather seats. Strangely low headrests, which I don't entirely understand, but it's fine. And uh, you know, everything looking good. So let's hop in. Love the wraparound dash. So you've got your controls here that swoop up into the dashboard, swoop around here, and then aim at you BMW style. I'm sure that's not uh, incidental. Uh, so all the controls are driver centric, much like BMW was at the time. And here it is. This is the only place on the car where I can see a visible Oldsmobile, and that is on the radio. So I guess they just couldn't avoid that. Uh, it's a pretty nice radio too. So anyway, here's our keys. Let's fire it up and get things rolling. Very nice, lovely sound from the engine. Uh, good insulation in the car, so you're kind of, uh, I don't know what you'd say, you're kind of distanced from it, but you can tell it's got a V8 under there, and uh, it sounds pretty nice. i run my window down a little bit, and run the air quite yet. So you've got gauges here, you've got your water temp over there. There you see just 20,000 miles on this thing. Uh, and don't take my word for it. Look at the Carfax. Um, 140 mile an hour speedo, probably yeah, something close to accurate. I don't know if it's limited or not. Uh, red line over six, which is pretty high for a GM V8 in the 90s. Uh, there's your fuel over there. Uh, you got this fantastic teal leather wrapped steering wheel uh, with, uh, I remember these from Buicks had these uh, buttons as well. Uh, the driver uh, steering wheel controls for uh, climate and radio, which was nice. Uh, weird looking uh, cruise and uh, turn signal stock there. Also weird looking uh, light controls. This is all, you know, standard for the Aurora and they, I don't think they used it on anything else. There's your trunk and your fuel. Uh, I think it's really, really neat shit. And I, <laughs> again, it reminds me of the first Rivieras, uh, you know, that weren't using all GM corporate plastic fantastic stuff. They were styled for being a Riviera, by the way, which this car shared a platform with. It's essentially a four-door Riviera at the time. But, um, you know, this stuff that's in this car is Aurora only. And uh, I think that's part of what makes it special. Uh, this is cool. You have this little tiny button you press, you flip it up, and there's your uh, driver computer thing. This is the days before tech. Uh, you know, for any snowflakes out there, this is what Instagram looked like in 1996. Oh, and AOL was going then. I'm sure you could have gone on that and done something. Uh, but it gives you, uh, you know, different, you could program it like navigation to tell, you know, in the old days, if you used a slide ruler and uh, wore glasses, this is your navigation. Uh, it gives you your fuel, uh, fuel range. It tells you how many gallons you've used over the course of time, uh, your average speed. Uh, it gives you more gauges here. So you get a voltmeter, uh, your tranny, flu your gender fluid shift. I don't know what you call it. Uh, anyway, you can't say tranny anymore. Um, Anyway, your transmission, fluid life, oil life, and yeah, looks like we're due for a change. Uh, oil pressure, nice, probably goes up with your oven. Yeah, it sure does. Uh, the trip is complete, if only, if only. Uh, date, this was a little bit freakish. Friday, July 13th, I never said it, so that's what I'm getting. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you can make your own bad luck, but if you can, then I have. And uh, I'm going to put that back. I'm going to leave that up, actually. I think it's kind of cool looking right there. Uh, very interesting looking climate control. Let me go over to defrost because we've got uh, Dalton's crappy windows are starting to uh, fog up. So let's see if we can fix that. Um, uh, I do like this little round digital climate thing, you know, where it gives you the uh, digital readout of where you're at, inside and outside temperature, uh, fan control. And if you look at the LEDs around them, or I guess they're normal lights at this point, but very, very cool. Uh, you know, and again, particular to this Aurora, uh, vents in here, this uh, very good sounding 
uh, cassette deck and CD player. You could go through different uh, plug-in, you know, sound settings, as well as having a weird little knob that does bass and treble in one bass. That's delicious bass. Uh, bass and treble in one, and a cassette, so you could run an adapter in there if you want to. Uh, anyway, very, very nice stuff. Uh, let's turn that back off again. Uh, very, very cool shifter, also finished in tea and leather. Uh, you can uh, set the transmission for power or normal. This is, again, real burl wood in there. Uh, you've got a center console here, which is a little small for a gun, but you're going to get it in. You could also fit CDs and cassettes in there. You've got both kinds, country and western. And a very European-style uh, cup holder here. Uh, that pops out and by European style it means it looks like it's gonna break any day so uh, very nice I also like the car is so driver centric that the passenger AC vent has to be on the uh, on the uh, driver uh, center console hump uh, you had twin airbags which came standard uh, up here you've got uh, vanity mirrors and uh, these very cool little double mirrors that, that's nice engineering at the time for Oldsmobile uh, that way you don't have to choose you know if you've got the Sun right on the pillar uh, this way you can have uh, both uh, covered and I think that's neat also a slider in case it's out there so uh, kudos to the Oldsmobile designers on that one uh, very very nice setup uh, this is a home link garage door back in the early days uh, again pretty fresh stuff in 96 and you've got a dual uh, with a slider glass sunroof and of course you can open it and that is one of the few options that you could even get on this car uh, pretty much almost everything came standard which you're gonna see right now I can reach oh my god okay there's the window sticker Aurora 96. So look at that. Okay, 36 grand for this thing. Again, about 60 grand in today's dollars. Uh, standard price 34,360. Uh, there were these are like the three. I think you could get a Bose system. That's the only thing this doesn't have. Uh, it does have the glass sun. But I mean, you know, how could it not? How could you get any fancier than all this cassette, CD, and a built-in EQ? So I don't know. Maybe you got better sounds. That's hard to believe, but uh, you could get the electric sliding roof, which this had, the Autobahn package, which added uh, V-rated Michelins and uh, 371 axle ratio, so uh, nice and peppy, and uh, 50 state emissions along with a heated front seat. So that's this is considered a loaded Aurora. Uh, you can see it's medium green metallic outside with teal inside, and I think that's a fantastic... You know, if you're an Oldsmobile collector, obviously you've been putting off getting an Aurora... <laughs> obvious reasons but you know if you got to fill out your lineup and you got to add an aurora you know here it is how do you get better than this a triple green 20,000 mile one owner aurora so uh, anyway all your and by the way the second year it's to me probably the best 95 was the first 96 they did a few nice little updates that uh, made it better while retaining everything that made the 95 successful so uh, if I'm collecting one 96 is where I'm going uh, I'll zoom in on that if you want to pause it you can see but that's all the incredible amount of standard equipment that came with this car uh, which was more or less the same way the Europeans did it at the time, uh, which was why Olds, although, look, you can't even see Olds on the window sticker anywhere. I mean, you'd think this was a car company named Aurora. Uh, but um, anyway, that's why they did that. And uh, and it worked. I mean, I don't know if it worked. It worked in terms of, you know, they sold a bunch in the first year. Uh, it didn't work at the end of the day, but that's because it was sabotage, not because it wasn't a really good car. Uh, I like the way the temperature is built into the driver's side, or sorry, passenger side door panel. I like the way it angles down and swoopy, like, yeah, I don't know, nice, nice style. Uh, you've got more heated seats and lumbar shit there, and uh, more power. you got some tweeters over the door handle, and yeah, everything kind of nice. Got my seatbelt on, we'll go for a spin. Hopefully those goats are gone. That was terrifying, honestly. It's the last thing that I want to see when I come in anywhere is a bunch of fucking goats looking at me. <sighs> Hunger in their eyes, cold black eyes, like doll's eyes. 
Peter's smoke gates. We'll see how Dalton did on the windshield. Uh, if I had to guess, I would uh, I would say shitty, but uh, we'll find out together. I will say that Peter did give him a giant truck to detail uh, right in the middle of this Aurora thing because Peter had to have this truck. So, you know, Dalton's little kissy smoochy detail on the Aurora became a rush job at the end. So I really can't hold it against the little bastard much as I'd like to. He's a little smug, terrible human being. Uh, you know, for the people out there who say, oh, Dalton, he must hate you. He's going to punch you. Let him try. Let that little bastard try. I'm way too old to fight. I'm too fat to run. And he gets the 38. He get, That's what he's going to get. It's what's going to happen uh, if he comes at me with his stupid beard and mirrored sunglasses. All right. Let's go. So front wheel drive. Uh, it's got very advanced variable. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Awful. Like a small disabled child did it. Uh, anyway, very advanced uh, variable assist steering that uses hydraulics and magnetics and electrics to work. So it's got low effort at low speeds and higher effort at high speeds. Again, expected of the European car stuff at the time. Um, what else has it got? It's Yeah, you, again, you got 32 valve V8 under the hood. You wouldn't have had that in your standard E-Class. You'd have had the V6. Uh, the ride of the car, they didn't make it too tight, you know, sporty tight. It's still got a little bit of that old guy boulevard ride, uh, but very nice. I think the closest thing I could compare it to uh, is a Lexus at the time. You know, it's not over plush but it's very plush and uh, i think that holds out nice uh zero to 60 in about eight seconds uh nice response from the throttle lovely steering feel quite honestly and uh, the people at the time were very enamored of this car in terms of the way it drove and they thought it compared very well to the euro models uh, i really it's such a shame i mean oldsmobile they pulled it off. They did build a car, this car, which does compete with the European cars Fabro. I mean, you know, people give me flack for that, but it did. Look, BMW, that 3 Series from 96, 10 years later, that thing fell apart. You know, bits and pieces falling off it. I know the engines are great, but uh, they fell apart. So don't tell me that uh, the build quality of the BMW at the time was that much better. It really wasn't. A nice smooth pull, uh, a little bit of torque steer, but nothing uh, terribly unacceptable, and uh, just a lovely ride going down the road. I can see why people, the people who own these things, really like them, and uh, unfortunately, they were marketed and planned in such a way that more people didn't get to experience it. Uh, it might have saved Oldsmobile. <sighs> Instead, they went the way of Pontiac, Saturn, and you know. General Motors dignity so uh, there it is if you have an interest in this car I don't know I think I might run it through an auction I don't know yet um, I might keep it for a while I don't even know if I'm putting it on the website um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, either way, if you have an interest, maybe you can talk me into it. Uh, call uh, call the guys at Auto House of Naples, 239-263-8500. On the web at Auto House... <laughs> Is it FL, autohousefl.com, autohousenaples.com, uh, and uh, you can see uh, all the stuff that's there and coming up, and uh, hopefully I have some more cool stuff on the way. So here it is, 96 Oldsmobile Aurora, one owner, 20,000 miles, triple green. Uh, you know, if you want an Aurora, this is the one you're going to want. Uh, I'll just put it that way. Uh, it's uh, it's as clean and nice a used car from this era as I've seen in a long, long time. And uh, if Mika Orlando were, you know, two weeks away instead of two weeks ago, this is exactly where that car would be, this one. Uh, thanks for having a look. Really appreciate it. And we'll, uh, we'll see you with the next one. Take care.